Good morning, and happy Mother's Day. Welcome to worship. My name is Susan Bresser, and I'm the pastor at First United Methodist Church. I am grateful to gather on this day, albeit from a distance, yet we still gather. We will worship, we will pray, we will care, and we will love, and God will be with us. Today, Henry Bresser joins Jim Athos and me, and Joe Sherman, our one and only sound crew member, in leading worship. Lauren and Christine Hayes will join us virtually with special music, and Beth Staniforth Seamster, our children's ministry coordinator, will offer a virtual children's message. We thank John Fry and Chuck Taylor for taking our recorded worship services and for putting them out into the world via Facebook and our church's website. I do want to say how much I miss you. I miss our community very, very much. I miss our handshakes and our hugs. I miss congregational singing. I miss our choir. I miss my prayer partners. I miss the laughter and the stories and the fellowship we share. I miss you. Thank you for your continued support of online worship, for your continued financial support in these times of crisis, for your prayers of solidarity, for the grace of your presence, even from a distance. I invite us to prepare our hearts for worship. Oh, living God, I long to see you lifted up in all your glory to see you there in holy beauty O Lord Almighty God living Christ I love you God, I long to praise you, heart and voice with all creation, to worship you for tender mercy, O Lord, Almighty God, living Christ, I love you. God, I soon will see you face to face in all your glory. I'll worship you in endless wonder, O Lord, Almighty God, living Christ, I Thank you, Henry. Henry and I will join in the call to worship. God is our midst, forming us to be God's own people. Though the way may be difficult, God will be with us. We need not fear. In the Lord we will take our refuge, for God is our strength. Come to the Lord who will surround you with God's own righteousness. Lord, open our hearts 
and our spirits so that we may faithfully follow you. Amen. I will now share with you the words of the psalmist from the 31st chapter. Please hear these words. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden from me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. May God add a blessing to our understanding of this word. sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind. on this day, I would invite you to put your hands together to say thank you to God for the music of Jim Athos. Um, I am grateful for his presence and his leadership, and I thank Henry for being with us on this day. I invite you to hear these words from John's Gospel, from the 14th chapter. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 
If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. And Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Before I share my message with you this morning, I want to tell you what happened after last Sunday's sermon. In last Sunday's message, I talked about my love of egg salad sandwiches. A member of the church who heard the sermon and who also has chickens surprised me with a dozen fresh eggs so that I can enjoy egg salad. What a nice surprise. I also talked about having Little Debbie snack cakes in my lunch as a high schooler. A friend of mine from high school who tunes in on our Facebook page for our weekly worship services texted me this message. You never had Little Debbie snack cakes in your lunch. You always had Hostess products. I know because that's the only time I ever got a Hostess product when you would trade at the lunch table. So thank you, Lori, for correcting me. I didn't have little snack, little Debbie snack cakes in my lunch. I had good old Twinkies. Yum. I invite us to be in a time of prayer. Thank you, God, for your presence, for the communion of saints, for those worshiping online, for one another, and for this unique occasion. We know that nothing can separate us from your great love. In gratitude for that knowledge, we now gather, separate from one another, but united in you. Amen. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. But my heart is troubled today. I need a haircut. I know that's a minor concern, but I'm still frustrated with this mop on top of my head. I've seen recent photos of some of you with beautifully cut and clipped and trimmed heads of hair. And you, re- and you say, it's the result of the goodness of my spouse or my child taking the time to trim and cut my hair. And you trust them to do that. And you look good. You all look really, really good. But that's not going to happen in my house. My spouse is a lefty, and our fourth and last child who lives with us is also a lefty. They both flunked paper cutting in kindergarten because they can't operate a pair of scissors. This is not a criticism of left-handed people, so you don't need to send me any emails about the oppression of left-handed people. I'm just saying, they're not going to take scissors to my head. I guess my heart isn't that troubled after all, is it? 
at least not about my hair. We do have dog clippers at home, so it may come to that. I'm not sure. Stay tuned. My hair, your hair, our hearts would be rather shallow if that were our greatest trouble. My heart is troubled for a bunch of other reasons. Racism rears its ugly, ugly head as the public is made aware of what appears to be a senseless killing of Ahmaud Arbery, a black jogger shot by two white men in a middle-class neighborhood in Georgia in February. A video of the killing surfaced this week, and this has added more grief to the collective grief we are already experiencing, but it has also caused great pain and anger and outrage and shows us yet again the malignancy of racism in our nation and the injustice and the inhumanity that often accompany that ugliness. This troubles my heart greatly. And we're still in the middle of a global pandemic where we in Whitewater, Wisconsin, are still under stay-at-home orders. But the reopening is beginning. Parts of the United States are relaxing their lockdown orders, opening up businesses and restaurants and shopping malls. The concern, the virus outbreak is still growing in many of the states that are starting to reopen. The health experts say this could have tragic consequences. Yeah. My heart is troubled. And the economy? Devastating. Friday's numbers, a loss of more than 20 million jobs in the United States and an unemployment rate of 14.7%, the worst since the Great Depression. Like you, I have family members out of work with mortgages and medical bills and the need for groceries. I do understand the need to reopen places of business to stimulate the economy, but at what cost? Yeah, my heart is troubled. Despite what Jesus says about not letting our hearts be troubled, my heart is troubled, and I suspect yours is as well. I don't think we can look at the pain in the world today, or the suffering of minorities, or the damaging impact isolation will have on our mental health, or the loss of jobs, or the closing of businesses, and not have a troubled heart. On the night of the Last Supper, the night he tells his friends that he is going to die, Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. That's where we are in our gospel reading this morning. Feet have been washed. Judas has left the table and has stepped into a nightmare of betrayal. Peter has been told that he will deny Jesus three times. Thomas is lost. He says to Jesus, how will we know the way to the place where you're going? We need a map, or at least a set of directions. And Philip, Philip just wants to see God. He's losing his, his center, his core, his focus. And he says to Jesus, just show us where God is and we'll be satisfied. We'll be good. And Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. 
Hmm, that seems like a pretty tall order, doesn't it? To not let our hearts be troubled. It's hard to hear even when Jesus says it, but when somebody else says it, it becomes a tired expression or too much like a nervous attempt at consolation by someone who themselves can't bear the pain or the suffering or the devastation at the current state of our world. We've all experienced the simple and well-meaning, oh, don't worry, it'll all work out, as less than comforting, because the one saying it doesn't know all the circumstances and doesn't know the real state of our hearts. But God does. God does. When we go back in John's Gospel to find those times when Jesus had a troubled heart, when he cries, when he weeps for his friend Lazarus, who has just died. The time when Judas betrays him. And the time when he faces the reality that the hour of his death has come. Jesus knows trouble. And he knows a troubled heart. During a time of confusion, isolation, fear, and desperation, Jesus says to his friends, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Because you know the way. And you know God. Did you catch the circumstances of the disciples' world when Jesus spoke these words? It was a time of confusion, isolation, fear, and desperation. Hmm. Interesting. On this day, under similar circumstances, I invite you to hear these words. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Because you do know the way. You know the way of Jesus. You know his life, you know his love, you know his death, you know his resurrection, you know his hope, you know his commandment to love, you know his expectations, you know his promise, you know his presence. You know. Trust that. Do not let your hearts be troubled because you have seen God. You have seen God in the way Jesus loves you. You have seen God in the ways of forgiveness, in the ways of generosity, in the ways of compassion. You have seen God making masks at the kitchen table using a borrowed sewing machine, watching YouTube videos with step-by-step instructions. You have seen God teaching children online from God's living room. You have seen God feeding people from the kitchen of First United Methodist Church. You have seen God in the young woman who writes messages of love and encouragement in chalk on your sidewalk and your driveway. You have seen God in the grocery store as God wipes down every cart with disinfectant so that you might be safe. You have seen God play God's guitar outside God's house for the neighbors. You have seen God celebrating graduating seniors with drive-by parades and yard signs. You have seen God in surprise deliveries of cookies and eggs, bread and flowers. You have seen God. Trust that. Maybe the way isn't the way we thought it would be. 
And maybe in our fear and anxiety, we might forget what we know. But we aren't alone. We don't do it alone. God still, even in the midst of a pandemic, God still invites us into a time of confidence and into a place of hope. Do not let your hearts be troubled. This is a gospel message for our time. Gospel means good news. This is the good news for our time. Our story, your story, my story, our collective story in this time of confusion and isolation and fear and desperation is not a story of being lost. It is a story of being found. We know Jesus. And because we know Jesus, we know God. Trust that. Do not let your hearts be troubled. May that be so for all of us. Amen. I invite us to open our hearts at this time to the music of Lauren Hayes and Christine Hayes. In our prayers today, let us be thankful for the presence of mothers, grandmothers, daughters, granddaughters, aunts, nieces, sisters, mentors, and women leaders who have loved us, cared for us, and offered nurturing grace. In our prayers today, let us remember Virginia Conkle, 
Virginia is Laura Cook's mother. She is currently hospitalized with two broken legs. Let us hold Larry and Susan Crone in our prayers and on our hearts as they grieve the death of Larry's brother, Clifford. On our hearts and in our prayers, let us remember those grieving the death of Ahmaud Arbery. And let us pray strongly for an end to racism and discrimination. And today we hold on our hearts those who are mourning the loss of lives to COVID-19. Let us pray for guidance for leaders in the government and for health officials as they make difficult decisions in the days and in the weeks to come. Let us pray. Seeking peace in a broken world, but also knowing God's peace through God's presence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Seeking peace in suffering, illness, and pain, but also feeling God's peace through healing, prayer, and those who help, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Seeking peace through our distress, depression, isolation, and fear, but also feeling God's peace through the words of loved ones and the hope we see in the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Seeking peace through the pain of worshiping separately, longing for our holy community to be gathering, but also feeling peace through God's presence with each of us as we worship together distantly, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, loving God. We need you now, as we have needed you every day, for we cannot live without you. And now we pray together the prayer taught to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Once you were not a people but now you are a people bound together in God's mercy and united in Christ's service. Depart from this time of worship in peace and confidence to love and serve in the name of Jesus Christ, the living representation of God, our way, our truth, and our life. Go in peace. Amen. Come my way, my truth, my life, such a way as gives us breath, such a truth as ends all strife, such a life as Such a love. 